So, so far, what we have begun doing is we have dissolved around 0.2045 grams of the toothpaste. You gotta put it in a 100 ml or 150 ml beaker, okay? And to that, we gotta add 10 ml of one molar KCL, which was already prepared by Jorge. Okay, so we already prepared this earlier. We added 10 ml of that and 40 ml of water. This takes a little while, so that's why we gotta kind of heat it up to boil it. Okay. As long as it, it dissolves, it's fine. It may not be clear, but it takes a while. So this is why we begin with this first, okay? Once uh, sodium fluoride has been dried in the oven, and brought back out and cooled, then we can prepare 1,000 ppm of fluoride. Even for this, we gotta still add one more, 10 ml of one molar KCL into this volumetric flask as well, okay? Now we're gonna start preparing the stock solutions for the calibration curve. So the 1,000 ppm fluoride is too high to run on the instrument. So we're gonna, our, our highest calibration curve concentration is going to be 20 ppm, okay? To do that, we got to take or pipe it out 2 ml of the 1000 ppm solution, as you see. Place it into the 100 ml volumetric flask. We once again need to add 10 ml of one more KCL. Now, if you notice, it's not going to, the pipe is not going to go through the volumetric flask. This is the way to do it. Take it into a beaker, pipe it out 10 ml. So we add KCL because it's the total ionic strength, or TSAP, total ionic strength buffer. We need that for the ionicity of the, of the, of the solution, okay? So this is gonna be added to all solutions. And now we can take it to the mark, or dilute to the mark with DI water or distilled water. To make it exact, you can always use a piper. shake the solution to dissolve everything. This is the right technique of mixing things on a volumetric flask. You just hold it on one side and shake it. Now we have 20 ppm. This technique is called serial dilution. So if from 20 ppm I can go half by pipetting out 50 ml from the 20 ppm. Pipetting that into a 100 ml volumetric flask and diluting the rest with water. But again, we should not forget that we got to add the one molar or 10 ml of the one molar KCL, okay? So right now Jorge is going to pipe it 50 ml. It's a big, huge piper. While he's, he's doing that, I'm going to also continue stirring. So it's always good to keep in mind that we've got to stir our, our solution of the toothpaste. Make sure it dissolves. not very easy with a big piper, but Jorge is an expert, so debatable. He got it. Okay. 
All right, so now we took 50 ml of 20 ppm into a 100 ml volumetric flask and when we diluted the mark we have basically diluted this solution by half which is how we got the 10 ppm solution okay once you get the 10 ppm i can dilute, dilute to the mark pipe it out 50 ml of that to the next volumetric flask to prepare 5 ppm and then from the 5 we go to the 2.5 and finally to the 1.25 ppm this technique is called serial dilution We are actually finished with heating up uh, toothpaste. So right now he's pouring it into the volumetric flask to dilute to the mark. If you remember, we already added 10 ml of the one molar KCL in the beginning. So all we gotta do is now just rinse this beaker. Get it to one hundred and as you can see, we have already prepared the serial dilution twenty ppm, ten ppm, five ppm, two point five, and one point two five. And like I said, it will not it will not become a clear solution, but it's good, it's fine enough because we know all the fluoride has gone into solution for sure. Okay. Right. The next part is to take your unknown, which has been assigned to you. We got to do a dilution over here as well. We take five ml of our unknown. into a 100 ml volumetric flask. We take 10 ml of the one molar KCL solution. With the same flask. And dilute to the mark. Okay, so now we have prepared our calibration solutions. And if you notice, we have transferred all of them into 50 ml beakers, 1.25 all the way to 20 ppm, then the unknown, and finally the toothpaste. Whenever we run calibration solutions, we always want to go from the lowest concentration to the highest, because this reduces the number of rinses we need to do between runs. So he's going to take the 1.25 ppm, we're going to add a stir bar, and now we're going to use a fluoride ion selective electrode okay the fluoride ion selective electrode is actually a solid state electrode and all it does is it gives us the differences in concentration between different activities inside and outside a solid state memory and by that we can get the concentration of fluoride okay now even the apparatus to measure it is just a standard pH meter the only difference is we measure not the pH, but the millivolts. And whenever we want to take our reading, at least on our instrument, we've got to press measure. Okay. So we're going to first take the, the electrode and dip it into the solution. You want to make sure that the electrode doesn't touch the stir bar. Let me show you a better angle. Uh, and also it doesn't touch the bottom of the beaker. Okay. Once we have a stable reading, we're going to write that down on our lab notebook. So you're going to have a table for every concentration of fluoride and the millivolt reading. Okay. That's it. Move on to the next sample. We gotta remove the stir bar, rinse the stir bar, 
with the eye water. Rinse the electrode. Wipe down the electrode. Take the next solution and repeat the same process. We're going to repeat this for all the calibration samples and then the unknown and also the toothpaste.